Good afternoon, parents, families, friends, and fellow graduates. To the John Paul II class of 2022, congratulations, you made it. I would like to start out by thanking everyone who has pushed me to be better in this chapter of my life. My friends, parents, sisters, my phone alarm, and the wonderful faculty and staff at JP2. I want to especially thank Dr. Hammerly, Mr. Evans, Mrs. Downs, and Mr. Saloma. Without their daily attentiveness and kindness, I truly would not be standing here today. Anyone who knows me knows that I am one of the first that is. This is why when my older sister brought home a decorative sticker from a conference, I immediately added it to the collection of stickers on my laptop without thinking twice. One day, one of my friends read the quote on the sticker written next to the image of a young man gazing up at a mountain range. Can beauty save the world? She asked what that question meant, and I responded that I didn't know. I had no personal connection with the meaning of beauty. But over the past year, my academic and personal challenges and my relationship with myself and God have helped me to answer that question. Can beauty save the world? My conclusion, like any of our English teachers would be okay with us answering, Yes, but also no. In my years at JP2, I would often look up at my peers to see tired faces, worried and stressed expressions, physical imperfections. These aesthetic imperfections show thoughtful and dedicated souls. Students who look tired because they stayed up late finishing an English paper mere seconds before the deadline. I can speak from personal experience on that one. <laughs> or had developed the all too relatable stress acne from wanting to do well in a game, competition, or performance. Because I value the type of hard work and dedication that I've seen in all of my classmates, I find myself losing my identity when I try to quantify my beauty by the way I look on the outside. Instead, I much prefer to focus on the words I wrote on the left-hand corner of my mirror. Mind, body, soul, sleep, and gratitude. <laughs> a simple reminder of what to prioritize in order to strive for inward beauty. Beauty that unites our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Beauty that saves. In the past four years, I have also experienced the death of three grandparents. Between dementia, being practically bedridden, or having translucent, wrinkly skin, none of my grandparents were aesthetically beautiful or even seen as useful to society when they passed away. But it was their perseverance through pain in order to maintain a relationship with me that made them beautiful to me and to God. Throughout high school, we have faced many painful trials and tasks that at first, we didn't believe we could get through. One such challenge for me was my very first BC calculus test, which I was so afraid of failing that I didn't look at my grade for an entire day. Thankfully, I passed. In order to overcome future challenges, whether academic, emotional, or spiritual, we should submerge ourselves in the task at hand, not cut corners, and embrace the common and mundane, but very real and purposeful work of life, such as coming back to class to get a printer pass after being rejected by Mrs. Gilby the first time, or frantically using our pencil erasers to measure the length of the Silk Road in Coach Morse's World Cultures class. Yes, I know that was very specific. <laughs> Achieving success with integrity assures us that we have the potential and the capability to change the world for the better. This type of inner beauty can save the world. Back to the now famous laptop sticker. <laughs> Turns out that that man looking at the mountains was St. Pope John Paul II, inspiring us to achieve the beauty of the soul. I would like to conclude with an excerpt from St. Augustine's Confessions, which goes like this. Late have I loved thee, beauty so old and so new. You were within, but I outside. Seeking there for you. Upon the shapely things you have made, I rush, misshapen. When at last I cling to you with all of my being, I do not hide my wounds. You are the physician, and I am sick. I am in need of your mercy. So as we step into a new, scary, but exciting stage of our journeys, we should embrace the hard work of life while focusing on God, the epitome of beauty, and on developing our own moral compass. Don't hide your wounds and your imperfections from the world. Rely on the mercy of God and of others. Also, be patient with your growth. The most rewarding and beautiful growth is a very difficult and tedious process, just like waiting in line for the perfect chicken waffles during sea lunch. 
I love you all so much for the past four years. And don't forget to have a great Cardinal Slay. <laughs>